Okay, good morning, all of you. Uh, good morning, all the respected participants and uh, uh, respected expert speaker, Shirin, uh, Dr. Shirin Jafferman. I like to welcome you all in the 5D AICT ATAL Faculty Development Program on the blockchain and its application. It's uh, uh, running from September 21 to 25. Uh, Today is second day. In the day one, we have completed three of the sessions. That uh, sessions uh, belongs to the introduction to the blockchain and its history. If, uh, second one is related to the cryptocurrency, and third one is related to the hands-on session on the Bitcoin. Today is the uh, day one, day two, and uh, there is a session one completed on the SHA hash. And now this is session two. I welcome you all. In the session two, the session two is based on the public, private, distributed ledger, and uh, uh, I like to welcome our uh, expert speaker, Dr. Sharin Jaffer, uh, ma'am. Uh, welcome, ma'am. I like to give a, a short introduction to uh, the ma'am. Dr. Um, Sharin Jaffer, ma'am, uh, is an assist, assistant professor in the computer science and engineering in the School of Engineering in Jamia Hamdard. And uh, she has, uh, Dr. Uh, Sharin Jaffer, ma'am, is uh, uh, specialized in the wireless networks of computing and network security okay. and had a great profile in the Scoopers, Manplay, and the Google Scholar and Research Gate. Ma'am has half century of the paper published in the Scoopers SCI and peer review journal, double Scoopers index journal. Uh, Ma'am has published a patent also with the co-pi of the three. And uh, Ma'am has regularly developed the internship and career campaign for the student through the Interschala and Epoch. And MEM has a, a session chair in the so many international conferences and also has a keynote speaker and resource person of the 20 plus webinars and faculty development programs. Also MEM has a, a given, a delivered the lecture in the ICT until faculty development programs. So I like to welcome, ma'am. Uh, it's really honor to welcome you here for uh, uh, expert lecture, and uh, I hope participant will get a good knowledge regarding to this particular topic. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Raki, ma'am. Thank you for this introduction. And um, before starting and going towards blockchain, uh, I just like to inform you, everybody, that um, uh, during this pandemic from 2020 to 2021. Uh, I have given not 20, but now 100 plus lectures in AICT Atal FDPs. And um, uh, giving uh, and delivering lectures was always my passion. But uh, uh, do, uh, but uh, since traveling was a difficult task, but now we have an online platform and a very good platform that is provided by Atal. We can now think and learn from all the peoples all around. So as a learner, always, I normally give these lectures because what I have learned new, I always want that people should learn from my experiences. And what others have um, to ask and others have to deliver, I normally, uh, if, if uh, a resource person in a particular conference or in a FDP, I normally attend uh, the lectures of other resource persons also so that I gain knowledge in every aspect of life. Uh, because I believe in a, a, a quote, a very important quote, that is, do it now or sometimes later will become never. Uh, for a starting point of view, since we have number of participants joined here, uh, I always believe that we should, in this current pandemic time, deliver our lecture or learn something that is very beneficial for the society. And blockchain currently is a current technology, which is very important for the society because uh, uh, there is, the, for example, uh, a corruption uh, has always been an issue in Indian uh, economy, in Indian politics, uh, in R&D crash, and not only in India, in all the world around, corruption has always been an issue. Then uh, talking about agriculture, India is an agriculture country. So uh, uh, when, when we are talking about agriculture, bringing agriculture on line, because uh, when we talk about farmers, farmers pay, uh, face a lot of issues. So bringing their identification, bringing their products 
uh, in a common chain uh, with with the uh, with the trust in the people to whom they are selling is again an important issue so always a technology should always be connect to society unless and until a technology is connected to society uh, the so, uh, the particular technology will never prove to be helpful and uh, 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 this is what why i am saying because uh, i have focused uh, in all the lectures that normally i deliver that the contents of the data is always and should be connected to the societal benefits uh, i am also uh, a pi of unnat bharat abhiyan project and why i am telling this because in that particular unnat bharat abhiyan project uh, we got funding from iit delhi that is the uba uh, who's who's handling uh, actually the whole uh, perspective on unnat bharat abhiyan and we got two uh, uh, two uh, 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 amounts of, uh, from them that is normally uh, uh, we got those uh, uh, product projects from uba in order to uh, uh, leverage for the societal benefits and um, uh, from jamia hamdard we have uh, adopted around five villages mm -hmm. or because normally we think that uh, delhi doesn't have villages but uh, uh, when we go when we went to when we did a survey we adopted five villages and uh, we are working for the benefits and all the um, uh, money and the projects uh, that are being provided us from um, uba we are working on those societal aspect so uh, this is the message that i always send to everyone to every uh, participants to every organizers that every event every project every product should be done for societal benefit Uh, further moving forward since we have many participants connected here i would like to ask because i want my uh, sessions to be interactive i want uh, uh, participants here any participants just we'll take 2 3 minutes then i'll start my ppt uh, which was the year first when you heard about blockchain and what you understood and what is actually emerged to be uh, rakhi ma'am do we have the option that participants can open their mic and speak up Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Anyone can open the mic and uh, they can speak. And uh, I like to uh, tell you that uh, there is one problem, ma'am. Uh, the chat window will not work. So I request all the participants. If you want to share anything, or uh, I request you also, ma'am. If you want to share anything, any uh, text, then you can send me the WhatsApp, and uh, I will send to the concerning WhatsApp group. There is a chat sure. option is not active in the MS team actually. Uh, so but you have already uh, sent you yes. my ppt uh, you can share to all the participants after my okay. presentation after the And, presentation yes yes uh, so any of the participants what was the first time when you heard about blockchain uh, what you assumed and what actually blockchain was can we have some discussions anybody from the participants because remember we all are learners here we are here in this aict atal platform in order to explore something in order to explore something for societal benefit anybody anybody from the participants let's have a very interactive Good discussion morning. yes may i know who i am ma'am yeah ma'am i'm prerna and yes, i'm working as an assistant professor in webs college and yes, uh, i am i have heard about blockchain last year Uh, although it's a very uh, i think i've heard late so uh, i had heard this because i'm pursuing my research in iot and i want to connect blockchain and iot somewhere then uh, to me blockchain what i got it from the session as well blockchain uh, in a brief is a digital ledger earlier i used to just assume that blockchain is all about cryptocurrency and uh, all about bitcoins but now more uh, insight has been brought by this fbp to us that blockchain can be used in various fields and how we can secure our database using a blockchain so that you know to avoid the malicious attack we can use for e voting we can use for various other applications where we want database to be secure great ma'am great nice to hear from you and uh, i am very glad when we have i have some interactive participants and when i interact with them i feel uh, uh, like honored because uh, uh, the best part of any kind of uh, uh, fdp or any kind of learning is interactivity i believe okay thank you ma'am thank, thank you very much we are honored to have you thank you ma'am anybody else anybody else uh, hi ma'am good morning this is nitin kamle yes sir Okay, so I uh, got to know about Bitcoin rather uh, blockchain in the year of 2017 because 
uh, I I comes from industry. So in my organization, people used to talk about Bitcoin at that time because that time the price was going up uh, on a daily basis. So just a out of curiosity i uh, you know google this word and i found lot of more material on website uh, on google then gradually i developed interest and i moved in another uh, company which particularly work in uh, blockchain however my experience and my background is not engineering or uh, it i am uh, but uh, somehow uh, I, I i i was more fascinated towards this technology and i get into it so this is how uh, uh, I, i i get to know about it and i started great so great great to you all uh, and uh, uh, i think what prerna ma'am and nitin sir both of them uh, i think my myth when i started studying blockchain was all about that bitcoin okay i always thought that blockchain is uh, only bitcoin and uh, 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 cryptocurrency is always blockchain and uh, i never thought about uh, i think everybody must have heard about kyc know your customer have everybody heard about kyc yeah ma'am yes yes uh, so oh, yes kyc is something like blockchain like it is kind of an implementation of blockchain and i think from 2008 almost that uh, uh, working on kyc started and nowadays whenever we go to banks and we have certain issues they give us a form that uh, um, um, that uh, fill this form Uh, uh, because we know we want to know our customer and simple if if in a layman if i want to say that uh, uh, what is blockchain about so if i want to uh, make a layman understand about that i normally put an example of a kyc because when i say a blockchain as cryptocurrency or bitcoin nobody is able to understand i'm talking about layman i'm not talking about a person who is an expert in blockchain who is an expert in computer engineering no i'm talking about layman and societal benefits as i uh, as i talked in the starting only the thing that we should make people learn is by using abc like uh, bitcoin or cryptocurrency with satoshi nakamoto starting in 2009 people came to know blockchain uh, like uh, like in 2008 only the kyc and everything started that was also using the uh, cryptographic hash technology that is your um, blockchain but in 2009 when satoshi nakamoto uh, wrote a paper regarding that bitcoin and cryptocurrency then blockchain boom came okay so now people started recognizing blockchain only as kind of uh, um, um, like um, uh, uh, like like uh, a, a cryptocurrency like money transaction and when we have those money into the specification people always are um, uh, like uh, whether to trust or not uh, whether to use or not whether to leverage or not but blockchain was actually brought in order to continue that trust because main thing for example if i have trust on my government then only i'll give all my credentials to a bank then only i'll give all my credentials to the government but if i don't have trust then i'll not give so blockchain was actually brought in order to maintain that trust on different different institutions so this is the layman and what my ppt will focus in this particular one hour or so uh, i already i think everybody knows what is a private blockchain public blockchain so although i brought uh, uh, my starting lecture was public and private blockchain but what i have modified my ppt into more of futuristic or predictions of blockchains so i have uh, uh, brought something mix match for you that is uh, something with the starting of the blockchain with going with some of the tools that are important for the implementation of blockchain and then going towards what are the predictions of blockchain so i'm just sharing my screen i'm closing my uh, video for this particular time we'll I'll, i'll again open when i'll have some discussions with you so i'm just closing it for timing for, so that uh, there is no bandwidth issue so i'm just sharing my screen now i'm just tell me is my screen all visible uh ma'am rakhi ma'am is my screen yes, all visible uh, yes yes ma'am 
screen is visible. Okay, so that's why. Um, uh, although I, in the starting when I had conversation with Rakhi, ma'am, I told that my, the name of my uh, uh, today's lecture will be uh, discussion about public, private, and uh, dis uh, like distributed ledger or hybrid type of blockchain. But I have modified it more because I I wanted people to know more things rather than knowing the theoretical concepts. So blockchain predictions moving forward is the name of my presentation that I'll be producing for all of you. And uh, I'm again thankful to um, uh, Purnima Institute and Rakhi ma'am and all the people who are actually connected for making this particular event success. And uh, uh, I am very obliged with the type of connectivity I have with Rakhi ma'am. She is very humble and she connects with everybody in a very, very uh, sweet manner. Thank you, Rakhi ma'am. Moving forward, I would like to start my presentation with a, a beautiful video that will uh, uh, take you into the journey of uh, uh, basics about why blockchain has become an important part of today's market. Let's let's check this video. Are you using blockchain for your business? If you are a producer, farmer, or manufacturer, you probably make something worth selling to the public. Your methods, history, and high-quality standards are all part of your brand image, something you should cherish and share with your consumers. But how can consumers and retailers trust you? How can you guarantee that what is written on the labels is accurate? Meet VChain's Toolchain. Thanks to blockchain technology, it's now possible to verify key product data that's been rendered immutable. VChain's Toolchain gives your creations a digital identity linked by a QR code or NFC chip. Consumers no longer need to wonder if a brand's marketing claims of simple origin honey, pesticide-free vegetables, organic produce, grain-fed beef, or limited edition custom design are all empty words. When the blockchain is able to help a brand differentiate by helping it prove the integrity of its supply chain. Retailers who invest intensively in food safety practices, ethical sourcing, and cold chain logistics can now communicate with their best practices to consumers by capturing data throughout the chain of custodies with IoT sensors. In this day and age, consumers are curious to understand the provenance and background behind a product, whether it's food, cosmetics, apparel, artwork, or any other product with a story. You can further enhance your engagement with consumers by adding videos, photos, and personalized stories that strengthen your brand's reputation and help your consumers purchase with confidence. VeChain Toolchain is revolutionary because it takes a complex technology such as blockchain and simplifies it into something anyone can use, from solo creators to small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. The key is fast integration. It's different from other blockchain platforms in that it has no coding required, standard templates, customized tools. VeChain Toolchain is a complete technology solution, which includes the software platform, data storage, mobile apps, IoT chips and sensors, APIs and SDKs. The service is highly scalable and features a pay-as-you-go pricing model so that the businesses can get familiar with blockchain without paying an arm and a leg. It also comes in three versions for small businesses looking for ultra-fast deployment to major corporations interested in completely customizing the look and feel. Most importantly, since VeChain Toolchain is a decentralized application which runs on the VeChain public blockchain, data is visible throughout the entire supply chain, from producers to end users. VeChain is the trusted blockchain of choice for many major enterprises, including partnerships with major risk assessment firms like PricewaterhouseCoopers China, PwC Singapore, the Deloitte Blockchain Lab, and DMVGL. Wherever you are around the world, help your business differentiate from competition and engage with customers by using VeChain Toolchain. Power up your supply chains in an intelligent and indelible way and help make transparency the new benchmark. Are you... I think everybody must have watched this video. Very important thing I want to wanted to convey to everybody through why I have selected this video. Number one, blockchain uh, is like simplification of blockchain. So many of the businesses are using that complex technology, simplifying it to maintain number one, digital identity, integrity of their data, 
number 3 is that reputation uh, how how reputed a particular product is then we have that fast integration then we have the pay as you go because many a times when we thought about uh, 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 blockchain we normally thought that blockchain would be very costly blockchain would be very difficult very complex but the easy things that lot of platforms have started doing is going with the pay as you go model simply the model that we are using for cloud also that pay as you go and we are leveraging the benefits of blockchain in order to make it very very simple and make it uh, helpful for the society normally i have a rapid fire in the starting but since i have discussions in the starting i'll go with the rapid fire in the end so that i have more people to answer these questions so what you can do you can just see these questions and we'll discuss the questions after the end of this particular ppt so i think everybody must know because we have already uh, taken first day lectures and uh, blockchain is kind of a um, uh, a kind of a uh, chain or a kind of records normally blocks are records and uh, the thing is that it is open it is a kind of kind of a distributed ledger remember it is not a distributed ledger but it is a type of a distributed ledger and as i told you that in 2008 and 2009 when satoshi nakamoto uh, uh, wrote a paper regarding that the blockchain and cryptocurrency then uh, this um, uh, blockchain um, award this blockchain term uh, gain popularity and uh, uh, when you are talking about blockchain technology uh, it's important to understand that um, um, uh, 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 when we are talking about uh, blockchain we are normally related to an open system a distributed ledger but remember the things the data that is written into the blocks is immutable okay remember the data that is written into the blocks is immutable but what can be done new block can be created so that there is an information that changes have been done so that that copy of that block is remains so you can don't change data on it but to make a new block in which the changes could be done so modification of the old block or old record is possible by adding new records remember we don't uh, uh, make changes on that block but we add a new block and make changes in them accordingly then moving forward when we are talking about blockchain technology as i told you when you are talking about banks when you are talking about agriculture uh, the basic uh, ideology of blockchain was to uh, the reduction of frauds was reduction of corruption and very important thing is a tamper proof consensus method uh we are talking mainly uh, for blockchain as a kind of a tamper proof consensus method and when we are talking about consensus it is a kind of an agreement which is being hold in order to make that block uh, permanent in order to make that data uh, uh, as a kind of a digital identity and uh, uh, from which the accountability and transparency is being maintained and uh, i think everybody since you this is the second day and um, uh, also we have so many things heard about blockchain so when we talk about blockchain the types of blockchain mainly fall into the concept of public the private the hybrid and the consortium consortium is a kind of um, uh, uh, frenemies the nowadays we have the word frenemies going together where uh, number of business solutions come together although they are enemies enemies in terms of the competition but still they use that common blockchain in order to uh, make their business uh, successful so talking about public blockchain we started using public blockchain as a kind of uh, uh, bitcoin or a cryptocurrencies then came the private blockchain private blockchain was more kind of a hyperledger technology and private blockchain was a kind of a centralized uh, mechanism and hybrid blockchain has the advantages of both the public and the private blockchain because many of the resources many of the Uh, 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 like the businesses and many of the organization want to use a blockchain in, in both form that is public and private so that's why a hybrid blockchain came into picture so uh, when we are talking about public blockchain as of uh, as uh, uh, specified that obviously it will uh, kind of a more of a kind of a structure where we were talking about that cryptocurrencies so that um, they allow those miners users to uh, uh, come inside that blockchain and uh, it is kind of fully decentralized environment is somebody speaking ye ye to kar ye ye 
ये करते रहेंगे तंगी करेंगे मुझे रे बोला हां अपना छुट्टी एंजॉय करो आप अपना छुट्टी टेंशन में ना रहो हो जाना है काम अह माय वॉइस इज ऑल ऑडियो यस यस आई विल डू सो ओके uh then when we are talking about blockchain uh, uh, basically with, with the public blockchain a token is associated and um, uh, and uh, normally those uh, blocks and uh, those participants have uh, that uh, they are joining the network and anyone can join the network as a node so it is a kind of a permissionless uh, network uh, when we are talking about the public blockchain but uh, moving towards a private blockchain because as i told you that uh, uh, blockchain is now not limited only to that cryptocurrency only to that bitcoin now the uh, users or businesses and organizations have started using uh, blockchain in terms of uh, private specification so uh, participants need a consent to join the network obviously uh, it is a kind of a more of a centralized approach uh, where uh, you cannot leave a network or join the network without any permission so when we are talking about bank transactions or when we are talking about um, uh, uh, more of uh, organizations using those uh, blockchains so it is a kind of a private mechanism and uh, private blockchains as i told you are more of a centralized in nature they may have a token or may they may not have a token associated with the chain so since it is more of a permission uh, kind of a, uh, a network so we already know or we know who is entering the network and permission is given to that particular node to enter the network so it is kind of a permission environment when we are talking about a private blockchain uh then moving towards a consortium blockchain as i already told you uh, there is a term called frenemies so it is kind of a collaborative model uh, that is being uh, uh, utilized by number of um, maybe banks by governments by different organizations and um, uh, they uh, are uh, uh, normally come into the uh, this particular consortium in order to take the benefits of the private blockchain and uh, um, and uh, uh, they are using these benefits in order to come together to make their businesses work together obviously competing together is one of the important specification but they are coming into a consortium in order to uh, leverage or benefit their uh, business to higher successful scenarios and hybrid blockchain as i told you also that uh, it is also specified or also remembered as a dragon chain because it combines the benefits of both privacy benefit because when we are talking about uh, um, uh, privacy um, uh, so the privacy benefits of a uh, uh, privacy benefits of a permissioned and private uh, blockchain and the transparency benefits of your public blockchain so privacy issue is being regulated with the help of your private blockchain and the public blockchain brings into the specification that transparency so those businesses who want to uh, make their business environment public but uh, in order to uh, uh, their transaction scenario is normally maintained as private but uh, their business is made uh, to the users public so they are taking into the consideration both those uh, scenarios that is the public and the private in order to build a uh, scenario where they have privacy also but uh, when you want your business to grow so the some public uh, uh, some uh, 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 some uh, outputs from the users as i told you uh, that uh, what we discussed in the starting video that nowadays um, uh, the uh, for example we are going with flipkart or amazons you have those videos you have those feedbacks and that to live feedbacks coming from the users to make your Your product more transparent and more uh, 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 successful in the market. So that's why both these scenarios are combined together as a hybrid blockchain. And uh, uh, the most important thing that hybrid blockchain is, uh, as I told you, that businesses now want both transparency and privacy in them. So that's why those uh, security of the transactions maintained by the private blockchain and um, that uh, 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 being transparent to the user, being um, approachable to the user, uh, making your product uh, as as uh, was discussed in the video, uh, gaining the reputation of your product, the integration of your product. There we require a public blockchain. So both these functionalities are combined together. 
similarly as i told you into the starting that uh, blockchain is a kind of a distributed ledger it is not a distributed ledger so um, uh, that uh, uh, it differs from the traditional database because um, um, uh, you are not uh, uh, information in a traditional database is uh, uh, um, uh, is, is specified in terms of um, uh because blockchain is a database but um, uh it is uh, maybe it is not centralized at one location your data it may, may be because as i told you that we have a combination of both public and private blockchain and so it's, it's important that uh, the distributed ledger uh, scenario uh, is being utilized by blockchain so when we are talking about the differences in a distributed ledger and a blockchain so uh, the important things that you need to take it to consider is blockchain is a type of a distributed ledger uh, and uh, you cannot call that every distributed ledger is a blockchain uh, so talking about a distributed ledger is a kind of a database that is decentralized which is distributed all across the computers or node and but blockchain is a kind of a distributed ledger maybe private or uh, public or a hybrid in nature and when we are talking about the real time implementations with the blockchain technology we have so many real time implementations because when we are talking about agriculture in agriculture we want that supply chain transparency traceability efficiency so agri digital is one of the uh, um, uh, one of the project then we have the grassroot is one of the project then we have the bex 360 is one of the project which is going on uh, they all are maintaining those supply chain management for the farmers so uh, it's important to understand there are so many real time implementations of uh, um, your blockchain but distributed ledger is still undergoing an under development in terms of implementation and uh, when we are talking about a distributed ledger technology it is um, uh, uh, it is 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 a uh, is a database kind of an environment but blockchain is taking advantages of distributed ledger in order to approach to the user in a more healthier and a transparent and a private manner and uh, as i told you that limitation of blockchain is not only till that bitcoin nowadays when we are talking about those walmarts when we are talking about those banks when we are talking about those accounting firms uh intellectual properties your crowd funding your debits your private markets ownerships trust on the government because nowadays it's important that all those uh, um, uh, 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 the individual uh, uh, citizen identity is being maintained illegally nobody de uh, delete those identities so e estonia is one of the government project then we have the votum is one of the project and from 2008 uh, indian government has started using those blockchain technology uh, for storing that citizens in data even your aadhaar uh, uh, specification and lot of banks as i told you that know know your customer tcs has also done a lot of work in kerala they have uh, built up that uh, institute that we'll discuss in the tomorrow's lecture when we'll be going towards a discussion of blockchain with ai and iot so a lot of work has been done for blockchain and uh, uh, talking about uh, those blockchain only as a cryptocurrency is now uh, specified as a myth that you are using with blockchain is only cryptocurrency and blockchain is only bitcoin is considered to be a myth nowadays because blockchain is a uh, has a cryptographic hash structure that can be utilized in any of the technology for maintaining transparency and privacy both let's see and check this video again an interesting video which help you to gain more knowledge about blockchain through the centuries trade has become incredibly complex today everyone trades with everyone on a global level Such trade activity is recorded through bookkeeping and information stored in specific databases which are closed and siloed within each partner, customer and service provider. Because of this, businesses rely heavily on third-party proprietary networks to ensure trust and certainty in their trade transactions. Trades are often managed by multiple siloed applications, each maintain their own ledger, security standards and network protocols. Resulting in slow, inefficient, and costly transaction processes. Blockchain technology affords us the opportunity to address these issues by fundamentally changing and strengthening the pillars of trade finance. Sounds great, but how does this work? Well, blockchain is a type of distributed ledger. 
decentralized database that keeps records of digital transactions. Rather than having a central administrator like a traditional database, blockchain has a network of replicated databases synchronized via the internet and visible to permissioned entities within the network. And because of this unique setup, blockchain offers a host of benefits. Firstly, blockchain is secure. It uses a highly secured cryptography that makes its decentralized database amongst the safest in the world. This means that hacking attacks are virtually impossible in the blockchain, as a hacker would not only need to hack into that specific block, but all of the preceding blocks going back the entire history of that blockchain. With blockchain, transactions are completed securely. This has a significant impact on banks, insurers, financial institutions, and regulators. Blockchain accelerates and secures trade flows between businesses, allowing for greater access to their banks and service providers, resulting in secure and less costly transaction execution. Blockchain provides for the first time in history the opportunity and the technology to transform and rewire global trade finance. By leveraging blockchain technology, Trade IX is rewiring global trade finance. So what this video again told you was is one of the most important thing is global trade finance because nowadays we are talking about the trade not only inside a country but we want that trade to move all around that world. So strengthening the trade finance with a secure cryptographic can be done with the help of blockchain. And as I told you that security and privacy is one of the uh, basic building blocks of blockchain. And uh, talking about uh, uh, blockchain development, um, uh, the uh, 2018 skill index of the Upwork has specified that blockchain has an inspiring space for innovation. And there is a huge demand for the skill blockchain specialist. So it's important to understand what are the tools that can help us in the implementation of that blockchain that can be utilized by us for uh, the um, again betterment of the society. So when it's important to understand that blockchain tool does not simplify the blockchain development, but it helps you to strengthen our knowledge on the blockchain domain. So we are not going towards building a structure, but we are uh, but we are strengthening our knowledge in order to use that particular environment. And when we are talking about blockchain, a simple diagram this specifies that um, a user requests a transaction. That is the starting step. Then a block of that particular transaction is created. And remember that this block is immutable. And then the block is broadcasted to all the nodes of the network. Then all the nodes of the network validate the block. And then the transaction is being taken place. Then the block is being added to this particular chain. Uh, more of a kind of your private blockchain and then the transaction get verified and executed. So very simple step by step, a uh, simple terminology, six steps, which explain that why blockchain is easier to use as in terms of uh, reducing that complex mechanism into a more of uh, easy going approach. So solidity is one of the environment and it is one of the undoubtedly the most popular language which is utilized by a number of blockchain developers and why we are calling it is a most of the easiest to use and uh, popular because it has been influenced by uh, C++, Python and JavaScript. So people who are have little bit knowledge over C++ and Python and JavaScript, they can go uh, with this particular blockchain and especially it has that uh, object oriented programming mechanism. So uh, developers uh, can use this for developing those smart contracts. And also it's in important when you are using those uh, smart contracts for crowdfunding or multi signature wallets or blind auctions, then solidity can be one of the best environment and uh, popular environment and easier to use environment as compared to some other tools. Then get again get is an Ethereum um, uh, node implementation that is using a Go programming language. So this is one of the little bit difficulty that comes with get because get is using a go programming language whether uh, when we were talking about uh, uh, solidities were more connected the c++ and python but still if you are going with a uh, 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 with a 
starting and learning perspective so you can go with the simple aspect of go programming language you can learn a new language and then you can use uh, uh, get and uh, create your own blockchain and um, it's important that again for um, uh, again for smart contracts even for transferring those tokens and exploring the block history get is also one of the uh, most um, uh, uh, utilized uh, go programming language because it is covered or it is being benefit with the benefits of the go programming language then mist again this is again a ethereum wallet and it is being developed uh, by the creators of ethereum so here uh, you can start using this platform and you can develop your smart contract supported by both windows mac and linux and uh, it's again basically uh, developed for developing those smart uh, contracts but the important thing that need to be remembered about mist is that uh, once you make that uh, password you can never change so it is a one time setup so when you start using mist so you have to remember that that password should be utilized throughout your journey when you are using the mist programming language going with sol c sol c is again a solidity compiler so here uh, you can use that solidity or you can use the sol c again it is written in a, a c++ language command line and uh, using that oops programming language and also again very much closer to the java scripts and um, uh, uh, you you can use the sol c that is the c++ or the sol js that is the uh, uh, solidity with a concept of java script so both the versions are available and uh, it is used in offline also and um, uh, again it is very important and very uh, uh, interesting uh, tool for utilization in development of the smart contracts it is very very um, um, uh, interesting to use of, for the people who know little bit about java who know little bit about oops and who are familiar with c++ they find it more easy to connect with all c then we have remix remix is a integrated development environment and it is again a tool that is being provided for the smart contracts development so it is uh, written in javascript so it is more uh, uh, user uh, no uh, uh, connected with it with it very easily and again here you can use in a browser screen or you can use it in locally or uh, uh, ready to go screen can be utilized so this is a kind of uh, a remix screen when you write start writing those smart contracts you utilize this particular screen for developing your smart contracts so this is also again a interesting tool to be utilized similarly we have a metamask metamask is also again a very uh, uh, beautiful and very interesting tool that can be utilized and uh, why i'm telling it uh, uh, it's it's interesting because um, it is again uh, becomes an ideal wallet for the blockchain developers and um, um, uh, you can interact uh, it uh, again with an um, ethereum test networks you have can utilize it as on a browser extension and uh, uh, the thing is that it can be coming with the um, uh, uh, with the concept that again uh, your chrome or firefox both these uh, browsers supports this so normally people who go with the browser environment they can use metamask to develop their uh, crypto um, uh, wallets or develop their smart contracts then again truffle truffle is also a very very interesting um, uh, blockchain development environment and um, it can be used for developing those ethereum based apps or your smart contracts or when you are uh, developing those automatic contract testing also can be done with the help of truffle and because truffle has everything it has uh, linking it has compilation and deployment audio, uh, yes uh, anybody speaking okay so truffle has all these three environments uh, uh, available so you can utilize uh, the all the uh, advantages of truffle and um, uh, you can link your code with it you can do compilation and it can be used for deployment and testing also then ganache ganache is again a blockchain tool and it is coming from truffle environment only uh, that helps you to again develop those blockchain apps and uh, also for testing of the smart contracts some smart contracts that are built can be tested again in the ganache environment 
and uh, this is very again interesting because here we are mostly focusing on the testing environment so we are going with more of uh, those concept where we are not building we are more of testing the smart contracts so here it there is a little, little bit different line as compared to solidity and now we are talking about ganesh then we have the blockchain uh, test net this is again uh, kind of a, 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 a truffle and a ganache environment where you are again using uh, testing the uh, uh, the uh, blockchain smart contracts that are being developed and every time uh, rather than going uh, and um, uh, uh, utilizing uh, your um, uh, 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 testing on a particular platform you can go with the test net um, uh, it reduces the financial burden because uh, you are using those apps and uh, for testing those bugs and errors that come into the smart contracts so this is again a open source environment that can be utilized uh, to develop uh, sorry to test more of the smart contract then this is very important we, uh, we normally studied uh, that we had the bas that is the, um, the cloud as a service now we have blockchain as a service so this is again very very interesting because um, this uh, is again uh, uh, reducing the financial burden on most of the environments so rather than uh, purchasing the blockchain or uh, developing the blockchain you can use blockchain as a service for uh, developing of your smart contracts for testing of their smart contract and we have microsoft azure amazon and sap and they are all are giving you that environment to use blockchain as a service that is pay as you use that i talked about in the starting video also so this is again a very very important service which reduces the financial burden <clears throat> on the organizations which tend to use blockchain as a service then let's look is again an interesting video which will explore you more aspects of blockchain when you vote have you ever wondered whether your ballot is actually counted if you meet someone online how do you know they're who they say they are when you buy coffee that's labeled fair trade, what makes you so certain of its origin? To be sure, really sure, about any of those questions, you'd need a system where records could be stored, facts could be verified by anyone, and security is guaranteed. That way, no one could cheat the system by editing records, because everyone using the system would be watching. Systems like this are on the horizon, and the software that powers them is called a blockchain. Blockchains store information across a network of personal computers making them not just decentralized, but distributed. This means no central company or person owns the system, yet everyone can use it and help run it. This is important because it means it's difficult for any one person to take down the network or corrupt it. The people who run the system use their computer to hold bundles of records committed by others, known as blocks, in a chronological chain. The blockchain uses a form of math called cryptography to ensure that records can't be counterfeited or changed by anyone else. You've probably heard of the blockchain's first killer app, a form of digital cash called Bitcoin that you can send to anyone, even a complete stranger. Bitcoin is different from credit cards, PayPal, or other ways to send money because there isn't a bank or financial middleman involved. Instead, people from all over the world help move the digital money by validating others' Bitcoin transactions with their personal computers, earning a small fee in the process. Bitcoin uses the blockchain by tracking records of ownership over this digital cash, so only one person can be the owner at a time, and the cash can't be spent twice, like counterfeit money in the physical world can. But Bitcoin is just the beginning for blockchains. In the future, blockchains that manage and verify online data could enable us to launch companies that are entirely run by algorithms, making self-driving cars safer, help us protect our online identities, and even track the billions of devices on the Internet of Things. These innovations will change our lives forever, and it's all just beginning. To learn more about the urgent future of the blockchain, please visit IFTF. So again, as I told you, um, uh this uh, uh, specification that blockchain is not only limited to cryptocurrency blockchain is not only that concept of bitcoin uh, there are a lot of uh, predictions 
about the future of blockchain in the businesses and in the advancement so um, as i told you that um, uh, depend uh, that uh, this particular my ppt will cover about the, uh, uh, the theoretical concept then then we have the discussions on the um, uh, the uh, tools that can be utilized for the development and testing of the smart contracts now we are going to the late, later part and the third most important part of this particular presentation that deals with the predictions and that deals with the future of the blockchain technology how it can be utilized again for the societal benefit number one is government data distribution very important because we require this distributed ledger technology and we want to replace that paper based transaction because nowadays everybody go with that digital identity digital currency so that digital systems if we are taking into consideration uh, that particular transparency trust uh, um, uh, security validation and encryption can only be done uh, with the most trusted technology of nowadays that is blockchain so for data distribution especially in the digitized environment blockchain is very very important and not only future it is a present on a lot of um, organizations this i will discuss you tomorrow in the morning session lot of organization have already started using blockchain in their current perspectives then going with greater transparency between industries is very important uh, it's very important because uh, as i told you we have the concept of frenemies because it's important to maintain the transparency and inherit the security of the blockchain between the industries so we have lot of industries that they are going with the uh, consortium blockchain they are developing their blockchain on their own terms and standards and they are utilizing those smart contracts uh, to leverage their a uh, business but also maintaining the security of their own uh, accounts and transparent transactions then institution issued uh, cryptocurrency very important because uh, uh, that fiat currency now they're talking about that fiat currency where we have the paper currency and notes so uh, cryptocurrency obviously will be the technology in the recent uh, coming future so um, uh, for example zimbabwe is one of the organized uh, 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 in uh, uh, the uh, country which has already begin the uh, utilization of bitcoin uh, uh, and um, uh, they are not utilizing those paper currencies so this is started using so in indian perspective it will take little time uh, because uh, it is important that that fiat currency uh, because number of issues number of cor uh, uh, corrupt corruption issues number of transparency issues still prevail on the cash transactions on those uh, fiat currency so that particular um, institution issued currency not only not going with bitcoin only uh, we are going with the institution issued currency that can take the advantage of the blockchain technology then as an identity very important it's important because um, uh, nowadays since we are talking about we are going with um, digital transactions so when you are doing, going with digital transaction you should have that digital identity uh, for avoiding any type of issues and maintaining the sovereignty because uh, you are talking about a particular a person who ne needs to prove his identity in a particular organization in a particular country in a particular um, laboratory anything in a particular bank so for that particular identity breaches to or not to take place again blockchain will play a very very important role and world economy as i told you nowadays world economy trust that digital uh, uh, currency and uh, uh, reduction of that paperwork those regulation uh, those corruption that are uh, utilized with the fiat currencies so lot of frauds and dirty politics and counterfeiting all is avoided and all can be further avoided if we are going with that particular utilization of uh, digital currency with the concept of uh, institutional backup or with the blockchain environment uh, instilled in it i normally don't take the name bitcoin because bitcoin is not only the solution there will be number of solutions that will be developed that will have all that transparency security uh, privacy into the consideration
and talking about statistics nowadays 1.5 billion people throughout those developing nations have um, uh, there's inadequate means of proving their identity so that uh, 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 blockchain identification with the international blockchain identification it's very very important because that legal documentation take a time nowadays we are going with those uh, uh, for example property issues for example are um, uh, uh, mark sheets uh, uh, all the mark sheets needed to be uh, stamped and so on when we were going from one country to another country so bringing that transparency in lot of uh, business environment lot of uh, identity issues can be solved if we have that transparency of blockchain being adopted by number of organizations also a uh, pragmatic government model as i told you uh, for decision making if you have machine learning also involved with blockchain you have predictive analysis you have iot also that i'll discuss because tomorrow's my lecture will be uh, a, a, a blockchain iot and ml a perfect fit so that's why now standardizations are being done and those decisions making are being done leveraging the benefits of all these technologies so they are also going to play a very very important role in the near future and uh, as i told you those adjacent technologies that i was talking about whether it's machine learning whether it's deep learning whether it's your um, um, uh, your iot whether it's your artificial intelligence all are being combined with blockchain for developing the trust for making decision making a important task so that the market can be more trustworthy so this is creating a next level advantage and validation tool this i have already told you a lot this is very very important because unless and until those fraudulent data sources are removed then only your validation could be done those human entries human errors they are prone to lot of frauds so this needs to be avoided so that more types of better data protection mechanism can be developed followed it by with the central bank data currency this has already been started uh, in asia and the middle east the caribbean has started using it the central bank data currencies because when we are talking about the private data currencies they were issue that maybe that private organization may get bankrupt or the private organization may evolve or may um, uh, run away but with the central bank data currencies which have more trust and then tokenization and digitization of those uh, uh, assets in terms of bonds and treasury bonds is being done so this is more of a environment where people have more trust in it so this type of environment have also been utilized and developed in lot of uh, organizations because why we are uh, relying to this particular thought because um, uh, this is more trustworthy so rather than going with the private uh, digital currencies lot of uh, 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 countries have started using the central bank digital currency environment uh, let's let's see again this beautiful video which show you more of the intelligent aspect of blockchain blockchain is going to be a very critical technology for the future development of the world it's not only ab about financial blockchain technology is not about bitcoins bitcoin is just a small function of the blockchain technology i'm a strong believer of the blockchain technology this is not about bitcoin or digital currencies or crypto assets it's the underlying blockchain technology now people can trust each other and they can transact with anything from money to uh, music to votes to uh, their identities peer to peer bitcoin is either my space or it's facebook i don't know but blockchain is so because that blockchain is going right like blockchain is here to stay forever and it's a very good thing so it's a Enter blockchain. Satoshi Nakamoto, 2008, anonymous person, came up with this way of people transacting, doing business with assets peer to peer. And trust is not achieved by a middleman. 
It's achieved by cryptography, by collaboration, and by some clever code. And what that means is that we now have a native digital medium for value. Effectively a software. Okay, so, so it's a what? distributed database that's managed independently, and that inherently, that inherent combination makes it a utility, makes it software effectively that has value. say 10 years from now, it's going to run on smart contracts, it's going to run on strong encryption and on, you know, peer-to-peer -peer based consensus mechanisms. So the core technologies underlying blockchain are going to pervade everything just like the internet has, just like object-oriented software has, right? So no. well, the choice, when I talk to people, I said, what do you think will be here in 2040, approximately 22 years from now? Will gold still be here? Well, it's been here since eternity. Well, will, the dollar, will the dollar be here? Right. I don't think so. And, and, and will the blockchain be here? I think so. We think of Bitcoin as a digital gold, so gold 2.0, but it's money, the first of the money that was ever built purposely for the internet. So it's sort of like what your email did to snail mail. Um, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin does for money. Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to have be physically in the same place. And of course, for large transactions, currency can can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about are trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So. It, 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 the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it, or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. It's still very early. Uh, institutions, everybody knows about it, everyone's heard about it, and there's some very sophisticated people in even these banks who know about cryptocurrency, but they're still not really in the game yet. It's still very much a retail credit market, uh, very much a lot of the actions out in Asia. So we, we still think it's the bottom of the first inning. It's If you read this book, you understand how we got here and how far it's come, but it's also just sort of the beginning in a lot of ways. Well, I think it is good. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it, maybe even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. And um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin, some people have lost money out of Bitcoin. Um, it's volatile. It's volatile. Yeah, I think it is quite volatile. But, um, but you know, with volatility, volatility, people can make money out of it. So, where I see crypto as effectively as a replacement for cash. But not as a replacement for, as a primary, uh, or not as, I do not see crypto being the primary database. I would say there's a lot of uh, need for developers, even at the core protocol layer. So things like improving protocol scalability, uh, working on the client implementations, the implementations of uh, things like proof of stake. Um, layer two systems, things like state channels and plasma, could probably use a lot more smart people. Um, on the application stuff, I mean, I guess you could always use more, but there's probably quite a lot more of that already. I think this particular video was such a beautiful video because uh, it was coming from the words of Elon Musk. It was coming from the words of um, uh, so many people who are actually into that market environment, um, even your Bill Gates. And these are some of the references that I think everybody can go on uh, studying because they will bring you a lot of information, a lot of stuff regarding the learning capabilities of blockchain.
so uh, i'm signing off here from jamia hamdard and i would like to interact with you all if you have some discussions some interesting questions because um, uh, knowledge needs to be explored these are some of my mail ids although i'll be connecting you with tomorrow in the morning session where we'll be discussing the concept of ai ml uh, combination the security issues of blockchain although people tell that blockchain is very very secure but there were issues coming into the uh, study so we'll be discussing with that so uh, let's have some of the uh, interaction with some uh, people some of the participants really great session ma'am uh, i really uh, learn a lot and uh, i hope the participant also uh, learn a lot and it really we are getting uh, good knowledge from like uh, that uh, blockchain as a service i uh, i got the knowledge it's really very good uh, initiative so i request participant if you are uh, willing to ask any question please please ask hello yes sir uh ma'am first of all thank you so much for such a wonderful presentation uh the kind of energy that you have shown is is, is amazing uh ma'am uh, i have couple of questions uh, i hope you won't mind to answer no no sir i'm there okay so uh, uh you uh, you uh, at the the start of the presentation you said uh, type of a uh, blockchain so you mentioned public private hybrid and consortium yes. so any any example of consortium blockchain because you uh, use a very 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 lege na plege aur kya hona a very uh, new word which is uh, free free money free enemies of enemies free enemies yes yes i heard this word first time yes second round mein honge so, so uh, can you can you give us some example of consortium blockchain ma'am Yes, sir. Uh, uh, any anything you want to ask more, then we'll discuss more. Every okay, okay. So the the, the second question is uh, about the uh, this uh, distributed ledger because uh, till date I was aware about the blockchain is the uh, distributed ledger technology. But you said it's not distributed; it's a type of distributed. So yes, difference sir. Yes, sir. between the distributed and type of distributed. The third question is related to MetaMask. So uh, uh, I know MetaMask is used as a wallet to store the digital assets. So uh, can we use MetaMask to store all type of cryptos, or it is related only to Bitcoin and Ethereum? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll start with the first question. The first question is in a consortium blockchain. So basically, consortium blockchain came with the concept. For example, I'll I'll take you a simple example. Uh, I am using Paytm, for example. I am using Paytm, and in that Paytm, I have um, I can have number of uh, um, uh, banks being connected. Okay, and uh, maybe I can have, um, uh, for example, I am using Swiggy. uh in that swiggy i i may uh, i may uh, go with the uh, either the paytm option either my credit card my debit card normally what happened previously previously you have the scenario where you were paying and you had limited either you'll pay by a uh, city bank card or your state bank card now what uh, is being developed a consortium of lot of organizations is being developed and why they are de developed although uh, maybe one of the bank may be enemy of the another bank in terms of business but in order to come together to do the business in a healthier manner they have gone together to build a consortium now what that consortium is for example ibm food trust what that uh, consortium is doing they are leveraging number of organizations uh, together to bring into a single portal to utilize blockchain maybe they may be of different different environments maybe of they be they may be of different different types of uh, 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 organizations or different type of utilization but the common thing they want is transparency and uh, privacy okay so they are coming together and building a consortium number 1 then number 2 uh, uh second thing sir you nitin sir you asked about uh, yes this is actually true that blockchain is a type of distributed ledger blockchain is not a distributed ledger actually because why because distributed ledger is a technology 
and blockchain is a kind of distributed ledger which has its own number of advantages disadvantages and issues but the concept where you are uh, taking your database into distributed environment is being served with the help of blockchain but uh when we are talking about real time implementations but when we are talking about transparency when we are talking about privacy when we are talking about this security this is all provided by blockchain so all distributed ledgers are not blockchain blockchain is a type of distributed ledger this is actually true then third thing you asked about metamask uh uh no uh, nowadays a lot of versions are coming uh, with the metamask and as i told you there is a concept of truffle there is a concept of ganache you can use them on different platforms to test your smart contracts bitcoin is not the only uh, scenario that can be utilized i hope sir this is uh, clear to you yeah ma'am yeah thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you so much and uh, one last question ma'am uh, yeah. we we all are talking about the blockchain and blocks uh, mom can you can you show us uh, uh, how a block look like i mean the constituent of a block because yesterday uh, we have uh, seen this demo wherein uh, uh, the, the the first uh, constituent was the block number then the nouns and the text and the at the last was the hash so only these four uh, are the constituent of a block or there are many more things a block a block is a record uh, simple in layman language block is a record as i told you when we are going with the consortium blockchain or when we are going with those um, uh, private blockchains this is not the uh, specific that block will be only these four attributes no block because as i told you when when people are you uh th these were the attributes that were very popular when we were using blockchain in terms of more of a cryptocurrency more of a bitcoin but as i told you that using of the blockchain in terms of banks utilization of blockchain in terms of agriculture utilization of blockchain in terms of um, different digital identities each one have their own attribute requirements so those storage those requirement of the blocks will depend upon the digital uh, identity specification that record requires so um uh, i i know these are important things obviously cryptographic hash is the is the uh, is the basic identity or how a particular block is recognized so that is re required block number is important but many of the things can be added in order to make your record more transparent and also private okay right ma'am right. thank you so much ma'am thank you so much hello thank you nitin sir uh... Murali Baskaran. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I have fundamental doubts, ma'am. Suppose if yes. the State Bank of India, uh, they have a thousand branches in India. Yes. Uh, suppose in in a branch, okay. they may be thousand to uh, to five thousand uh, accounts are there. Suppose if the State Bank of India uh, want to wants to adopt uh, uh, blockchain technology. now currently we are transferring the amount from one bank one account to another account through bank if yes. the state bank of india want to uh, wants to adopt the blockchain uh, what will be the changes will happen whether all the account holders will have the blockchain or any modification it will reflect in the all the accounts so although um, this is not a li little bit more for a consortium but as per my knowledge and my thinking i truly believe that blockchain is a kind of technology currently uh, when when we are talking about utilizing in bank it is already working uh, as i told you know your customer is a very very important terminology that is being utilized and to, from 2008 is being utilized by lot of banks whether it's sbi or other banks in order to digitally track all the uh, uh, all the users and all the people who have that um, uh, uh, connection with a particular bank now what you asked is the, that uh, um, uh, each of the user will have their block that is again a policy issue that is again a cons uh, consortium issue that will be taken uh, decision uh, 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 when when we are talking about because uh, when we are uh, as you uh, name that uh, uh, since you are you name state bank or uh, any kind of a central bank so uh, this this terminology will come into occurrence more when we are utilizing blockchain in terms of central bank uh, digital currency 
CBDCs because when CBDCs will come into picture, then there will be a lot of specification where a block need to be made for each user because that will be very very important because uh, that will be an environment where you will be uh, utilizing or handling your block in terms of uh, user perspective. But currently, when we are talking about um, a blockchain in terms of uh, 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 a bank's perspective, uh, here we are talking more of the digital identity currently, more of digital identity uh, uh, being secured with the help of blockchain and more of making your transactions transparent and secure. So currently, uh, the utilizations of banks of the blockchain is still here. But in India, when those central bank digital currencies will come into the picture, uh, it will be more transformation in terms of technology. Hello, ma'am. This is Bhagavati Priya. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, what is the difference between consortium blockchain and hybrid blockchain? Because uh, uh, here uh, there are similarities between the consortium blockchain and hybrid because both are maintaining the blockchain protocols and the single pro portal. So what is the main difference? Consortium blockchain is normally a blockchain uh, that is more in a private structure, but it is being built by the consensus or by the uh, uh, per, uh, perspective of different organizations that who want to come into a consortium together. But a hybrid blockchain is taking the advantages of both your private and public blockchain. So normally when we talk about uh, uh, hybrid blockchain, we are more into the consideration of hybrid, uh, which has both the public and both the uh, like uh, advantages of both. But consortium blockchain is normally private in structure, but it is coming into a uh, kind of a public space scenario because no number of organizations are coming together in a consortium for utilizing that blockchain for their business perspective. So there's the basic difference coming to the structure. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Hello, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma'am, this is Sunita from Ballari, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, ma'am, I have uh, so one basic doubt. Uh, yes. we, uh, from this session, we came to know that, that this uh, blockchain is a database. Okay, it contains uh, multiple blocks. So uh, any data, if it is already stored in the, in the block, uh, can't be modified. And uh, in future, uh, if you want to modify or add some uh, uh, additional uh, information to that block, then we need to create another uh, uh, block. Ma'am, is there any uh, uh, storage issues in future, ma'am, as we go on uh, adding blocks, blocks into that? No, ma'am, no storage issues. Why no storage issues? Because um, uh, uh, th th this is a very important aspect because uh, blockchain is something which is more of a kind of a environment where the uh, uh, users or their uh, organizations will take into consideration uh, blocks in terms of uh, of the um, uh, like like as as you do as uh, uh, we did just discussed that immutability is a very very important uh, issue because um, if if uh, the blocks are modified then the purpose of the blockchain is uh, uh, will not uh, serve any particular scenario but the important thing is that uh, see as I told you that immutability is important for a block to be maintained. But if you want to make changes, you can bring a new block and you can make changes. For example, I, I, I'll give you another example. For example, I, I, I normally go to a bank and fill a KYC where I say that my number is changed. Uh, for example, you want to change your phone number. So they don't delete your previous record. They mm -hmm. update your record, but their previous record is always mm -hmm. there with them. Okay. But now send all your updations to the particular uh, environment. Uh, yes. so phone number. But your previous is always there. Uh, now, as your second uh, issue that you told, and what, what will happen is your traceability and your transparency will be maintained. Now, second thing you ask, nowadays, a lot of organizations are going with blockchain with pay as you serve. 
so that particular for example here i talked about you with amazon i talked about with with, with ibm these companies are serving other persons business environment as as we thought that cloud will be a shoe nowadays na cloud is also not a issue because if you are <clears throat> for example Uh, going with a cloud which is already purchased by your organization that that comes unlimited because your organization is paying it but if you are going with a gmail cloud then your uh, uh, account gets finished and you say that uh, you have to uh, uh, take more um, uh, space and then you have to buy for it so that that money issues come into the picture so obviously that will be there will be a scenario in the coming future where you will go with pay as you serve so more uh, more if you want more space then you have to pay for it that that will bring business into picture okay ma'am uh, one more ma'am uh, uh, this uh, sbm or sbi or uh, uh, this uh, swiggy all are uh, uh, centralized or decentralized ma'am ma'am uh, talking about the environment where uh, um, uh, 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 because when we are talking about distributed structure uh, normally when we study distributed distributed is always an environment that is showed into the top but centralization is there uh centralization is there but user uh, is always sure uh, user uh, user in order to maintain the trust because user will never maintain the trust on a distributed environment user always maintain a trust on the centralized environment so uh, for for user to show environment is always centralized but down the ground distribution is there then it means that the consortium is a centralized one Ma'am, consortium, as I told you, is all depending upon the uh, structure that is being uh, required by the those consortium organization which want to use it. They may require a centralized structure, so they will develop a centralized environment. But if they want a decentralized structure, they can develop and use a decentralized environment. But privacy and security uh, need to be maintained. Uh, it means the these platform based on the uh, environment or requirement can be made it as a centralized or decentralized you mean that yes, yes. ma'am as i told you trust normally people go to trust for a centralized environment but down the line there is lot of distribution there oh, okay okay thank you ma'am thanks a lot thank you, thank you ma'am ma oh, one more question ma'am if i have 1000 blocks in a blockchain and yes. another blockchain will have 1 lakh whether the block each block in the 1000 blockchain with the memory space required is same or different ma'am uh sir um uh, the, uh, th this is again a, a discussion issue because as i told you because um um as 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 your question comes into the specification that um a memory for a block this come into the, because when we were talking about bitcoin uh, the block size was normally uh, being like anybody could come into the network and any anybody could leave the network we were starting scenario was like that because there 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 was no specification that uh, what will be the block size or what will be the uh, particular no, no, uh, no ma'am my question is the yes. in the blockchain the first block and the last block the size will be same or not the same same uh, scenario if you are talking about private sir or consortium or hybrid what are you talking about uh, you take private private bitcoin bitcoin you take ma'am suppose if i add uh, if i purchase a bitcoin now my i am creating the new block already 1 lakh blocks are there if i am adding the new block whether now you said that when you add this information will pass to all the blocks am i right yes yes in that case if 1 lakh block blocks are already there now 1 lakh one block is coming enter into the blockchain now this data will uh, spread or uh, distribute it will spread into the distributed data so that the memory of the existing blocks will vary or it will change so can you repeat the question again no there are 1 lakh bitcoin blocks are available existing now i am purchasing yes. a new block coin so that is a 1 lakh 1 lakh one first one in that case my information must be uh, uh, given to all the blocks that means they are storing my information am i right yes yes in that case uh, whether the block size will increase or not Uh, so normally as you told that we can take an example of bitcoin so um, uh, uh, the, uh, when we started utilizing uh, the concept of bitcoin there was a fixed maximum size okay 
uh, so uh, when the block size for the bitcoin was started as utilization it was 1 mb okay now it has increased to 4 mb okay so uh, the 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 uh, this thing is that uh, that uh, with the evolution of the technology the uh, block size can be increased obviously the contents can be uh, uh, the contents are immutable that's the concept no that means uh, you while creating the blocks in itself we, we must know what is the maximum blocks we can add yes right? yes 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 thank you ma'am thank you very much okay uh, so uh, okay think, yes yes sir uh, thank you ma'am and uh, thank you uh, it's really a nice session and all queries also clear so i thank you all the participant and thank you uh, Dr. Sharin Jaffe, ma'am, for a nice session. Uh, tomorrow we are meeting, ma'am, again in the morning section, and we have yes, interesting sir. again a session where we will yes. see how machine learning, IoT, and blockchain is a perfect fit. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, all the respected participant, I like to request you that uh, the next section will be two o'clock, two to four. Uh, that will be a practice session, practical session, hands-on session. So that will be the other link for that particular session. So uh, I request you to leave this particular link and uh, join another link for session three. Okay, thank you all. Have a nice day.